This is Torsion Project, and you're listening to the Literati Records Podcast.
Welcome to episode 193 of the Literati Records Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Graybeard, and I want to thank you for tuning in, turning on, and supporting independent music. Man, I could hardly believe it's already July. Summer is in full swing, lots of great concerts going on, and the UMS is right around the corner. The UMS always gets me going, and it may be my four favorite days all summer. The lineup was just announced, so if you don't already have tickets, you may want to pick some up. Lots of great bands again this year. Also, just in case you missed it, we have the first full-length release from Literati Records Artist and the Black Feathers available for purchase on our Bandcamp page in either digital or physical format. We think it's pretty awesome, so if you get a chance, we'd love it if you'd give it a listen. Once again, I want to give a huge shout-out to our show sponsors, Todd Fleming at Sasquatch Design and Jamie Hillier at Module Overload Recording Studio. I can't thank them enough for their long-time support of our podcasts. My guests on the show today go by the name Torsion Project, a tight trio of veteran musicians churning out a blend of dynamic riffs and contemplative lyrics that they've dubbed Thought Prog. The band has been gaining steam since the 2014 release of their Perception and Reason EP and the recent solidification of a new lineup. We'll chat with the band today about the music on their new EP, the deeper vision behind their band name, and their gig at Three Kings this coming Friday, July 11th, opening for The Worth. All the music on today's episode is from the Perception and Reason EP and is available on the Torsion Project Bandcamp page. You can also find a complete track listing of today's show in the episode notes on our website at www.literaterecords.com. Well, that's it for me. Enjoy your time getting to know Torsion Project. Greybeard, signing off. All right, well, I'm down here at Three Kings with members of the Torsion Project. Um, let's start on my left here and get a quick list of names and instruments. Uh, Sean Beyer, and I'm the drummer. Aaron Lawrence, vocals, guitars, uh, samples, visuals, all kind of good stuff. I'm Amanda Krauss, and I got bass. You have a very interesting name, the Torsion Project. What does torsion mean? Or what does it mean to you guys especially? So, uh, Torsion Project actually started out as Torsion. It's, a, you know, the meaning of the word itself actually is to contort, to twist, right? So you're with torque and all kinds of other, you know, uh, associations. But um, in our kind of philosophy, it's torsion goes both ways. You can actually contort something or be contorted by something. So if you take it to a philosophical level, you know, how you, is the world contorting you, twisting you, or are you actually doing the twisting on the world? You know, so it's really a matter of perspective. And, you know, we, for a little while we were torsion and actually turned it into torsion project because it, it, it's more than just the music, which the music is very central and very important, um, but there's also an art involved and social media and promotion and any type of artistic endeavor that can actually be encapsulated within this project. Well, can we get a brief history kind of how the band came about and started playing together? I don't know. We've, we've all been musicians for years and years and years and years, which is great. Um, and, God, about four years ago, kind of really started this project uh, on my own and actually went through a couple of other individuals, finally found Sean, thank God, um, has been the real you know, quarterback, the solid foundation uh, behind what we do. Um, and then, unfortunately, went through a lot of flaky bass players, and we're very, very fortunate to have found Krause because she has her shit together, she's amazing, brings lots of ideas. And it's we're really a you know a trifecta of there's no box like how can we think outside the box and what ideas do we bring to the table and what works and what does not work. Your 2014 release Perception and Reason is a gritty blend of tight, heavy riffs and more spacious arpeggiated guitar patterns. It has a darker feel of like facelift and dirt era Alice in Chains while the musical tones and textures kind of remind me more of opiate or undertow-era tool. Wow. 
Would you say that's an accurate assessment of perception? I'd say we're not even close to that kind of a ball game. Those are, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 that's really, really quite an honor. Um, but we don't sit around and you know write music that we think is going to be either very commercial or playable or people are going to like. Um, one of my own personal philosophies has always been I write music that challenges me, that I enjoy, um, and that's why you see a lot of down tunings, a lot of minors, a lot of uh, off time, you know, especially splattered throughout a lot of the different songs. And it's not meant to be for everybody. It's supposed to be for people that get it and they go, oh, I, I made that emotional kind of connection to it. But more importantly, in, in surpassing all of that, does it challenge the three of us? Does it make us happy? And at the end of the day, if that's not happening, then this band isn't here, right? So. Where did you guys record the album? Um, we, we got together with Bob Fabrach from Slim Cessna's Auto Club. Um, Blood Axis. Blood Axis. And, um, he has an amazing studio in his home, and he's one of those legends here in the scene. And we were very honored um, that he you know, chose to work with us and spend his time with us because he could be doing a million other projects. Um, so that was a really cool experience to get his insight and I think especially into um, you know, the, the vocal parts. He had a lot of good input, yep. things that we hadn't thought about before. Um, but the, I think the sound he captured was pretty spot on, kind of that live, um, not overproduced. So he did a great job. But I was talking to him, and he's extremely busy, but he's also extremely picky. There are people all over the world that are asking him, hey, will you record this? Will you just mix down this? Will you master this? And he's like, no, it's not worth my time. So I talked to him, and he was like, yeah, you know, um, I really enjoy what you guys do. And I thought one of the uh, epiphany moments was when he was looking at us, and he was like, what do you call this? <laughs> and we were like, I don't know, and he was like, do you call it math rock, do you call it prog, and and I, you know, kind of came out with a, a little bit of a, yeah, a little, little moniker called thought prog, you know, where it's very progressive, but it, it should make you think and have some kind of emotion, right, whether that's you hate it, you love it, you can't understand it, but you want to know more, as long as it elucidates some kind of response, right? So he was really, really instrumental in taking us under his wing going, I don't have time for all this other bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to take you guys in and we'll just do it. I think Thought Prog's definitely a good uh, good tag for it. Cool. Well, as songwriters and music fans, who would you say are the artists that you most connect with or, or who inspires you? One of those people that, you know, just like, you know, you hear them and you go, yeah, that's it. I, I, that's, that's the way you do it. We know yours. What? what? Your, your influence. My influence? Oh, my influence is uh, John Paul Jones, the reason I picked up the bass. And I'm highly influenced by Getty Lee. So, those are my main influences. Nice. A lot of jazz basses, but I won't I, get into that list. We were looking around and actually saw our profile on this band mix or something, and she was actually doing a bunch of uh, Zeppelin covers. It's Mirage, and I was just like, I've got to talk to this girl. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, for me, I really love Danny Carey, of course, the polyrhythms and um, the kind of intricate stuff that he does. It's not all heavy, it's very, you know, thought out. Um, Mike Portnoy, when he was doing the Dream Theater stuff, Matt Cameron with Soundgarden and Pearl Jam. And Brad Wilk is another one, especially the, the latest album with Sabbath. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I think there's elements of what we do that sound a little bit like Sabbath, too. So those are some of my top, I guess. Vocal-wise, you know, you were talking about Lane, um, and he definitely out the love Jerry and Lane, their sense of harmonies and being able to kind of think outside the box that way. and not in the mainstream. As far as some of my inspirations for guitar players, I like a lot of heavier stuff. A lot of the guys from Meshuggah. Um, you know, you got Adam 
from Tool, obviously, big influence. Uh, Jerry Cantrell, very melodic. Uh, I love, love blues players. You know, even Joe Bonamassa and some of those old school guys. Okay, rips. Oh, yeah, but, you know, even going back to Johnny Cash and fucking, you know, just name Muddy Waters and Lead Belly, some of those guys, just amazing, amazing individuals as far as musicians that were willing to do what they did and damn everybody else. I don't give a shit. I want to play what I want to play. I mean, those guys are all, like, pretty iconic within their sound and genre and, you know, so influential on so many people. But who are some other local artists that you think our listeners should check out? Who do you guys like around oh, town? Geez. <laughs> I know Amanda's got that, some, some that good opinions. That is a long too. list. <laughs> she's at every every weekend. She's at a show. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of um, local bands that I that I don't miss their shows, like Low Gravity, Shingonzo, um, The Worth. Definitely Native Daughters. Don't miss any of their shows. Um, Vices I admire is great. We just did a, an acoustic session at their studio, which was really fun. Recommend other groups in town to check that out. That's a cool opportunity. Um, we did a fun show with Protosonic at Herman's Hideaway. And they're from up in Boulder, but really oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, we had to beg them to come down. Yeah, they don't play Protosonic. a lot of songs. Protosonic. Yeah. And Tauntaun is always fun. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. There's even like Wool Gatherer down in uh, Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. Some good guys. Yeah. Well, um, I know you guys have a show coming up right here at Three Kings. Uh, you want to give us all the details on that? Who you're playing with? What time? Dates? Yeah, we are honored to be uh, playing the, the worst EP release show. They're releasing a phenomenal EP. Got to check it out. And when you come, you can actually get it for free. They're handing out the EPs for free with cover, so. We're going on first, so, I don't know. Like yeah, we're going on right at 9. Yeah. First. Yep. Doors open at 8. Go mm-hmm. 9. Yeah. And then uh, the whole night is just killer, so, I mean, get here early, stay late. You will not be disappointed. Well, what track off Perception and Reason should we close this interview with? Do you guys have a favorite, or...? One that's kind of dear to you your heart. Three people with three favorites, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll we'll play them all, man. Sweet. <laughs> well, I have six, so. <laughs> I would say for my pick, it would be probably Days Full of Night. Yeah, everybody seems to like that one. Days Full of Night would be a good one, I think. Cool. Well, hey guys, thanks a lot for taking time to to meet with us, man, and and uh, let us know what's going on with you guys. It's going to be a great show. That's July 11th, right here at Three Kings. Friday. Yeah, man, it'll be a great show. Thanks well, for your time. Really appreciate thanks. your time, man. Yeah, thanks for having us yeah, and for supporting local.